Being at Fistbump Media and, uh, and loving doing these uh, this webinar series. Uh, today's webinar, we're going to focus on uh, on writer strategy for several of our uh, uh, writer blogger type uh, clients and uh, friends out there. So. Uh, so we're going to dig into a, a really cool topic, and really this is a fundamental topic uh, for anybody uh, who wants to, to run a, a blog or write online uh, and develop a presence as a writer online. Uh, and and it's, it's how to find the right focus and direction for your blog. This is really important because one of the things that I see over and over and over again from a lot of writers is just kind of lack of direction. All right. I even started out that way. Uh, my blog, and we're going to take a look at some things on my blog and stuff too. My personal blog, um, as a as a faith based Christian writer, uh, uh, which is just just my niche. And this these concepts apply really to anybody who's writing online. But uh, but my niche is you know faith based Christian writing, and uh, I had started blogging because because I was I was studying theology a lot, and I was teaching in a in a young adults. 20-somethings ministry quite a bit and stuff too. So blogging kind of became my way of processing everything I had going in and coming out, uh, it, you know, just just to get, get out, work out the ideas and stuff. And, and it was really a great tool to help me process my thinking and stuff. But but f- what, what happened was for a long time, <clears throat> my blog, it just kind of stayed flat, right? Because it really lacked any focus and direction. And, um, and without getting into too many details and stuff, I, I, I started finding something, one thing really in particular that, that I thought was really important, a certain kind of core set of ideas and principles uh, that I wanted to really kind of really drill in on. And when I started doing that, that's when traffic really started taking off for me. That's when subscribers started subscribing to my blog. That's when social media shares started to take off quite a bit more. And I started to realize a lot of success as a, as a writer and a blogger uh, online, uh, really because I was finding that focus. Uh, so this is really, really important fundamental step uh, that can really set you apart from just a uh, I'm just doing my blogs online uh, to uh, listen. I'm actually, you know, sharing ideas and building a presence in, in uh, online and, and really communicating with people. So, uh, so it's a really important uh, topic and idea. Uh, in fact, so important. Uh, we have one of our e courses. I just want to kind of point out real quick too is our uh, 31 days to hashtag blog awesomeness. Um, it's only twenty nine dollars. Okay, so it's just probably the best twenty nine bucks you'll ever spend on your blog, uh, and and really some of the stuff that we're talking about today is you know is what we kind of dive into in some of those first couple lessons uh, within uh, thir- the thirty one days. So so like first two days or so, you know, really kind of start to dive deep into these ideas. Uh, and play around with things. So, uh, so we're kind of talking about some of those I- I- ideas and concepts. If you're interested in checking out the 31 Days to Blog Awesomeness e-course, $29. You can find it at academy.fistbumpmedia.com. That's academy.fistbumpmedia.com. Uh, go check that out and get that, and uh, and uh, figure out all the rest of the other days to, to to you know find blog awesomeness for your blog too. So, uh, so with that. Let's take a look at this. Why find a strong focus for your blog, okay? Uh, And the first thing is here, just really two reasons, and and this is just kind of answering the question of why this is really important. I shared a little bit of my story with you for a moment, but but this is really important to to, to get, and and because this is how you're gonna use this information later on as well too, right? Uh, The first thing is, is to, to improve the user experience. So when we do blog audits for uh, for writers, uh, online writers, one of the big things that we see, and one of the questions that we get a lot too, when when we're working with people about blog design, is is that a lot of people have a couple of things that they're that they're doing that they enjoy, right? Uh, for example, you might be a, a mom blogger, right? And maybe you want to blog about homeschooling and essential oils. Those are a couple of things that just they're not the same thing, right? You know, they might be important to some of the same people, but but to really kind of you know 
have multiple lanes that you're going in like that can really kind of distract the reader and say, well, what am I getting? If, if I subscribe to the email, am I going to get a bunch of emails about blog posts and stuff that aren't quite as important to me? Maybe because I'm not into one of those things, but I am the other. You know, so, so really finding a good strong focus is going to improve the user experience so that when they're on the site, they know what they're getting, right? Um, it's a very clear uh, direction for them. Uh, and if they're going to subscribe to your email list, they also know what they're going to be getting in their inbox, right? You know, so, so it's really important to, to make sure uh, that you're providing a good, clear focus. For example, even with me, right? Uh, my personal blog is, 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 a, is a faith-based Christian blog, right? Uh, BibleDude.life. Um, you know, there, you know, people are going to, you know, learn about theology and study and missions and, you know, things like that. Things that, that are important to, you know, what I believe it you know, kind of defines my, my, my faith. Um, but I also started Fist Bump Media and I write a lot about uh, building your brand online and things like that, too. If I try to do all that stuff in the same website, I'd have a lot of confused people. Nobody would subscribe because maybe some people are interested in one, but not the other. You know, so so it's important for me to, if I have multiple things like that that I want to write about, consider actually doing multiple sites. You know, that that's a lot more work to maintain, obviously, but... Uh, uh, but but think about that, right? Because really, it's really important to to focus in a single area uh, and do that really well, uh, because that's going to improve the user experience for you. Building on that, one of the biggest things, most important things that search engines actually look for too is good user experience stuff. How much time are they spending on the website, or how many pages are they visiting? Uh, things like that, right? And and from a search engine optimization perspective, not only do they look at some of that user experience stuff too, but they're going to scan over your whole site to kind of figure out what is this about because they need to know how they're going to index and categorize you on on search results and stuff, right? So it's not just a matter of um, you know picking one direction or a right keyword on a blog post or anything like that. That stuff is important. But overall for your site, you know, it, it, you're either going to rise or fail. Uh, what was it? The, the rising tide raises all the ships, right? You know, so, uh, so, so being able to have the right kind of structure um, allows you to, uh, to, to build a stronger uh, credibility and authority with the search engines that helps out all the rest of your blog posts. So uh, it's really, really important uh, to, to maintain that. Um, so, all right. So from there, let's look at. We're gonna, I'm going to look at three things really quick, and this this will be one of probably one of a a, a pretty quick webinar here for you too. We're not going to drag this out much longer than it has to, uh, but I want to look at three things that you should be looking at um, to, to to help you kind of find that focus in that direction, right? Uh, source number one is going to be self reflection. Okay. And what I mean by that is, is, is you need to be asking yourself some questions uh, before you even look at other sources to help you kind of find that direction. Uh, and, and to do that, you to ask yourself really two simple questions. The first question is, why do I block? Okay. Why, why are you doing this in the first place? You know, is there something that you're really passionate about, right? Uh, maybe even sit down and, and think about it and just kind of jot down a list of the reasons of, you know, th th this is why I blog. I, I blog because I'm passionate about this, you know, the, this idea. You know, for me as a, as a faith-based writer, right, you know, I'm, th I, I'm really into to studying the Bible and understanding how I apply that to my life and, and what that means and how it defines me as, as a Christian and, you know, and things like that. You know, for you, it might, maybe it's a food blog, a fashion blog, you know, whatever. You know, why, why are you doing it, you know? Uh, and as you kind of identify those things that you're really passionate about uh, and the things that, you know, really fire you up and, and that's why you want to write, right? Uh, that helps kind of answer that question. So you, you want to kind of document that really quick too. Why are you blogging in the first place, right? Uh, and part of that even kind of spins off of this, why am I blogging, but who is my audience? Who am I trying to tell the story to, right? Um, because that becomes really important as well in, uh, in helping provide some of that clear direction too, you know, because you've got a story to tell, but who are you telling that story to? Uh, you know, so as you reflect on those two kinds of questions, 
you can really help kind of identify the lane that you're going to be in. Okay, so um, so I mentioned you know for example, let me actually pop over and I'll take a look real quick. My my personal blog, right? Uh, I mentioned my personal blog is at, at BibleDude.life, and um, uh, and really you can see from looking at the blog, uh, you know, that there's there's really right up here is kind of three sections here. This this read, pray, and serve, right? Books is where you're going to find my books, uh, but read, pray, serve, right? And and this and this idea of a BibleDude.life, right? You know, to me. Uh, these are the three things that it takes to live a Bible dude kind of life, right? You know, I, I, I center my life around the Bible, right? So, so these are the three things that that I, I feel like it takes. You know, read is is, is has to do with, and you even look down the home page here, uh, it has to do with Bible literacy, theology, worldviews, stuff like that. Too pray has a lot to do with. Uh, reflection, a life of worship, spiritual practice, right? Uh, serve is the, the ministry, the missions, the outreach, you know, the, the, the things that are the kind of the outflow of being a Bible dude and what it means. Uh, you know, so so this is one of the things too, this is really important to make sure that you're very clear about the direction that you're going to go and what you want to be about, okay? Uh, and we're going to kind of dive more back into that in a second. Uh, but really, uh, why do I blog? Because that is something that I'm passionate about. I am passionate about, you know, centering my life around the, the teachings of the Bible and, uh, and and how I apply that to my life, right? You know, when I think about my audience, you know, my audience is, is people just like me, you know, people who want to do that same thing, you know. So uh, so as I think about the, the types of posts that I, that I write, you know, I'm not trying to preach at somebody. I'm sharing my experiences with people too, so that they can relate and maybe learn from, and and maybe I can learn from them and stuff too in that conversation. You know, so uh, so that's that's where you know you want to think about why you're blogging uh, and who your audience is. Okay, and that's the first source is the source of self-reflection, uh, because as you answer these questions for yourself. Uh, so you'll begin to uh, really kind of start to define and clarify uh, what the you know how you should focus your blog. The second source I want to take a look at is other blogs and websites. Okay, so as a blogger, you know one of the things I think is really great about the blogging community is is that it's kind of a community. You know, uh, a lot of my readers, uh, you know, on my blog are other bloggers, right? And and I know as a blogger, somebody who writes myself, uh, I also, um, you know, read other people's blogs and stuff for inspiration and uh, just to engage and be a part of the community and stuff like that as well too, All right? So I know that there are other blogs that I enjoy, right? So So as a source of research, check out some other blogs that you enjoy. And I'll read through this list, but I wanna show you what I mean here in a second, right? Uh, check out other blogs you enjoy. Uh, look at bigger publication websites. You know, there, there are websites that are like online magazines and things like that too that, uh, that share a lot of stories and articles that might be of strong interest and similar style and character and stuff to you, uh, the, the, what you're writing about, and some online forums, right? So let's take a look at each of these real quick, right? Uh, so here's a guy, uh, uh, Pete Enns, uh, and this is a blog, uh, and just full disclosure, it's not a blog that I've actually read. I was actually just kind of looking around for, for similar types of blogs to, to mine. And, um, and, and his focus is, uh, is, is, it's all about the Bible for the everyday person, right? You know, and, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of like me. I'm not a super theologian or a seminary trained pastor or anything like that. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy who loves the Bible. I'm just that everyday dude, right? You know, so, uh, so you know, as a source of trying to finding my direction and my focus, uh, to you know, to be able to look at blogs like this and uh, see the kinds of things that he's writing about, um, you know, that's that helps me, uh, you know, kind of figure out. And by the way, I found this guy on search. He's ranked pretty high on search engines for similar types of terms that that I know that I would want to rank for. So he's doing something right. Right, so uh, so I will actually even want to see what he's doing, so I can kind of learn from this and say, uh, digging up dirt in the Bible, you know, uh, you know, picking and choosing from the Bible, you know, these these are kind of common 
you know, uh, white privilege, you know, is, is uh, you know, th that's a very time relevant uh, type issue and stuff, you know, he's talking to other authors, you know, you know, so, um, so, so I can, I can see kind of the direction that he's going and he's hitting on something uh, that can actually help spark some, some of my interest, right. And maybe some of the things that I would want to write about, but I can also kind of look and see and identify uh, maybe this is why he's doing well, right? This, this is, you know, if, if I dig in deep a little bit and look at some of these blog posts and see how many, you know, how many of the posts have, are, are getting a lot of social shares and things like that, um, you know, it can help me identify what some of the, his most popular content is. You know, one of the other things to look at too, when you're looking at and evaluating other people's websites and blogs is what are they missing, right? You know, maybe there's something too that uh, that's kind of in your realm of passion, and they're kind of hitting a lot of it. Uh, but you know, is is there a gap somewhere where that they're not filling? They they go, ah, oh, I love what this guy is talking about. Uh, but I think there's another important part to the conversation that he's not getting, and and that, that's a little bit of a niche lane that. Uh, that you can kind of step into uh, if there are spaces where people aren't talking about certain things uh, that you think are important uh, and maybe not join in the, the, the crowded marketplace. Uh, there, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a great book in, uh, uh, that, that has to do uh, with like business strategy uh, and it's called a, a blue ocean strategy, right? And, and the idea is, is, is you don't want to swim in the red ocean because that's where all the sharks are, the water's bloody and stuff, you know, this is where everybody is, right? You want to get out to the space where nobody is, where there's no sharks, right? You know, competing for, for the same attention and stuff uh, and where you're swimming by yourself, you know? So, so that's one thing to consider as you look at and evaluate other people's blogs is not that they're doing anything wrong, but what parts of the conversation are they not hitting that fall in that realm of what you're passionate about and stuff too, that maybe you can really zero in on and really kind of become the voice uh, having to do with that. Uh, I mentioned uh, not only looking at uh, uh, you know other blogs you enjoy, but bigger publication websites. You know, so for example, as a faith-based writer, uh, Pathios uh, is a big like online publication, and, and they have a lot of separate elements and stuff too. Uh, but you know, here's a, s a section about Bible and culture, right? And and uh, one-stop shop for all things biblical and Christian, right? You know, which is right in kind of my lane, right? You know, so I can take a look here too and do the same kind of thing. Uh, look through some of these uh, these posts. To, to try to better understand what kind of stuff is being written about. Same thing, right? Same thing as I just did for the other blog. You know, what kinds of things are not being talked about that I think are really important? Um, you know, and kind of dig in, right? You know, where, where can I, um, you know, find, find inspiration from current events and, you know, how people are using those to talk about that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, because, you know, that kind of trend hopping and stuff too is, you know, with, with uh, big conversations, can be a great source of traffic, uh, you know, for you as, as you write about things. But evaluate how people are doing that, how people are writing about the stuff, you know. And again, look for the strengths and the weaknesses. Uh, what are they doing well when they have these kinds of conversations? Um, what are they doing maybe that you feel like you might be able to do a little bit better? Again, that's not to bash them or say they're doing anything wrong, but you know, yeah, you're writing online because you have a voice and you have a perspective. Uh, that you want to share so uh, so take a look at that right look at some of the bigger websites you know think of things about how they're structured how they're branded you know um, you know the, the types of things that they're writing about the types of things that are not writing about because all of that can help you kind of fine-tune uh, again some of your focus as well uh, and when we talk about uh, other blogs and websites I talk about online forums right uh, don't you know bypass the idea of, of using w websites like reddit you know, uh, Quora is a place where people go and ask a lot of questions. Uh, Medium, you know, is, is another uh, great source for, for uh, online writers that are maintaining their own separate website. You know, it's just kind of have a profile and long form blogging, you know. Um, but uh, but a place right, like Reddit is fantastic. You know, you'll find some links and stuff too as well. But, um, but it's really cool because as people have these conversations, you can get in and dig into some of these conversations and stuff and see how other people are responding when people have uh, viewpoints or questions and things like that. Uh, but things are upvoted, downvoted and stuff too. So you can see the stuff that even starts to trend a little bit. Um, you know, so, so when you get in there and you find a subreddit, uh, in this case, you know, as a Christian blogger, right? You know, the subreddit of the Bible. 
you know, so, uh, you know, look at the questions people are asking. What are they sharing? Uh, what stuff is, you know, engaging and becoming most popular stuff? And take note of those ideas because those most popular topics uh, can become great ideas for how you focus uh, focus your writing blog posts that you might want to share. Uh, and as you dig in and open some of those up and, and you know, see this one, uh, where do people go when they die? Uh, you know, got 45 upvotes on it too or 58 comments on it. Uh, look at that conversation thread, see what people are talking about. Um, you know, but, uh, but those are the things, again, that will help you uh, identify some really good, solid direction. Um, you know, in all of this, right, it maybe even steps away a little bit from the things that you're necessarily super passionate about. But what you want to try to do then is to take those things that you answered in that first question um, about why you blog, who's your audience, you know, your self-reflection stuff, you know, so, and uh, it, it, and kind of create a bubble of, of what that stuff looks like. Uh, but then also as you do some of this other research and you find some of those gaps and find questions you feel like you can be a strong voice in and stuff that people are asking in online forums and stuff like that, right? Create another bubble there too. And there's going to be that intersection piece in the middle uh, where uh, where you're going to start to develop a little bit of a sweet spot uh, for uh, for the topics that you want to kind of kind of build your blog around, right? Uh, to have a really good strong focus that's actually going to reach people, okay? The third source, let's take a look at this third source here. Uh, and the third source has to do then with keyword research, okay? And again, another quick little plug here, uh, we do have a, just it's a $5 uh, gig, pr probably the best $5 you'll ever spend uh, uh, over on Fiverr. Uh, and you can you can find all, all of our gigs there at the, the fiverr.com slash fistbumpmedia. Uh, but one of our gigs, and it's fiverr.com, uh, with two R's uh, slash fist bump media, um, but one of our gigs is uh, is called SEO Keyword Research Report. That's a really popular tool that uh, that we have, and uh, I'm actually going to show you one of them uh, here quick. Uh, this is one that I actually ran for a blogger recently, and again, uh, another faith based blogger, uh, but we use their blog and. Uh, you know, a few kind of kind of seed keywords and stuff, you know, so when you think about some of the things you do in that self-reflection, what are the things that you're really passionate about, uh, you know, the topics you want to write on and stuff, uh, and then and then how do we use that information, right? So, so if you've been already blogging for a while, you have some content on your blog, I can use that to kind of scan and kind of see what kind of keywords already start to, start to kind of come up, uh, kind of pulling from uh, from your blog, uh, and then I can use those other kind of seed keywords. You know, uh, you know, if you're passionate about a certain type of thing, um, you know, and, and use that to kind of identify what people are actually searching for on the internet. Um, and in this case, right, uh, you know, I'm not going to dive super deep into this, but I want to show you how I use this really quick. In this case, I come up with then with a whole list of keywords out of the research that I do that kind of scans, uh, you know, the terms that people are searching for, how many searches per month uh, happen uh, for each of those keywords, uh, things like keyword difficulty, which has to do with how difficult it would be to rank uh, for those terms, uh, and, you know, other things. Uh, competitive density has a little bit more to do with, like, advertising type stuff, click potential, how many people might come through. Uh, for searches on that stuff too. In this case, again, you know, like I said, a faith-based blogger, um, you know, the, the top term that comes up related to uh, the, the research that we were running is the Lord's Prayer, obviously very popular. It's 301,000 searches per month in the United States, right? Um, you know, not a horrible keyword difficulty. I like, typically like to look for stuff under seven, uh, under 70, um, competitive density, click potential, right? Joyful, you know, 12,000 searches per month, you know, and this is one of the mistakes that a lot of people fall into is like, I want to write about joy, you know, uh, you know, and maybe that's, it gets a lot of searches per month. But then look at that keyword difficulty, 92.86. It's a very hard term to rank for. Uh, the click potential, you know, even if you do get right for it too, is going to be much lower, right? So, so this is where some of that keyword research comes in. The blogger I sent this to is like, I feel like I've got gold in my hands because it gives them some good sense of direction. Uh, you know, so so anyway, we, I look at a few things like, 
you know, what the, the, the search volume is per month, uh, the difficulty of it and stuff too. Uh, you know, what we got down to is what some of the better terms that they could be using to focus on, to focus their blog, is how to get closer to God and who we are in Christ, right? Both get decent amount of search potential, you know, search volume uh, and keyword difficulty uh, is is getting to the lower ranges there, right? You know, you know, even this one, getting closer to God, you know, is another one that, uh, you know, is, you know, getting a really nice range and stuff for keyword difficulty. So there's going to be easier terms to rank for. Um, and this one, not a super high click potential, but then like who we are in Christ, right? Uh, you know, uh, you know, pretty good uh, keyword difficulty, but really high. Uh, click potential, right? You know, so so all of this to say that you know a term like that could help really define you know what your blog is really about. Okay, uh, so so anyway, I just want to kind of highlight this real quick because because it, it shows you that you know taking some of those things like those passions and things that you're talking about. Uh, you know, I can even plug in like you know if, if you have some of those kind of competitor, other bloggers you follow and stuff too, I can even plug in their websites into a tool like this to see what kind of keyword terms they're ranking for. You know, if they have a lot of content that's similar to uh, the type of stuff you would want to rank for uh, and kind of pull and glean from that stuff too and really put together a list. And it's not just a list of what the most popular keyword is, but which ones are going to provide you the best opportunity? Because you might be able to look through a list like this after a little bit of keyword research, and we can help identify where some of your better opportunities are going to be, right? Uh, and um, and then through that, you can say, yes, that's going to be the focus. That's going to be the focus of my blog. That's going to give me some really great opportunity uh, to get my blog ranked on search engines well and to become kind of an authority on a certain topic and a subject. Okay, uh, so think about that because that keyword research could be a game changer for you. Okay, uh, and again, you can you can get that report from us for, for personalized for you uh, with our feedback and uh, perspectives on it uh, over at uh, fiverr.com slash fistbumpmedia. Uh, $5 keyword research report uh, can really uh, make a big difference uh, for your blog. Okay, so with that, right, uh, you know, we talked about... Um, uh, taking this idea of the, the self-reflection, why you're blogging, right, and kind of identifying some of the kind of core ideas that you want to be about, that you want to be known for, that you want people to connect with you on, right? Uh, you know, and 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 you think you find some readers in, in that in that space and stuff too, people that might want to uh, pick up and learn from uh, some of those ideas and engage and have those conversations. Uh, talk about looking at other websites and blogs. And, and how you can identify not only the things that they're doing well, but maybe also where some gaps are. Uh, and then run a lot of that stuff through, you know, some kind of keyword research to really help fine tune and really drill down what your best opportunities are uh, for, uh, uh, for, for building your presence, your blog, okay? So how do you use all this information, okay? You go through this. Uh, and, and you feel like you, you've identified a really great, strong direction, maybe you've got the keyword research and stuff like that in there too, and, and you've nailed it down and said, yes, this is the topic that I want to write about. This is, this is the thing that I want my, to define my whole blog, right? How do you use that information? Okay, so uh, this, this is how we use that information and, uh, and take all of those kind of keyword ideas uh, in the research uh, in the keyword research and everything too, and, and turn that into, uh, you know, how does the, this then impact your blog, right? And there's really three things that I look at uh, when I think about uh, how you use this information. First, uh, it has to do with structuring your blog, right? Um, you know, so think about how how you build it in the first place. I see a lot of people, you know, try to build out a lot of different pages about this and that, and you know, here's here's a you know one series that I wrote and whatever right uh, it, it, 
you know, when I do these blog audits and stuff too, one of the things I, get, I frequently run into, and people know it when when I'm ready to give this feedback, is your blog is a mess, right? Uh, it's just so scattered and everywhere, right? Um, you know, so jump back to my personal blog here again, real quick. Um, again, I really want to try to define things: is is read, pray, serve. You know, the, the the three main things, right? That I feel like defines what a Bible dude is about. You know, um, you know, each of these areas, uh, you know, kind of covers a few subtopics, right? So, so I use a few categories of stuff uh, to do this. But you know, as you look through look through the site and say even. We even go to read, you know, here's a couple of recent blog posts in the topic. Um, you know, again, you know, some recent blog posts. Uh, I even call out some feature blog posts. Maybe these are some historical blog posts that I have that I've written many years ago that I just want to make sure still gets in front of people if they're looking for this kind of stuff too. And then, you know, even going back further, uh, you know, with recent blog posts, um, you know, over time and stuff, you know. so. Uh, but you know, really break it down, and uh, you know, hey, here's here's the subtopics and stuff too. You know, authentic Christianity, Bible literacy, book reviews, theology, worldviews. That's what this is about, right? So I've structured my whole website around the kind of core ideas uh, that, that that I feel like this is what it means to live a Bible dude type life, right? It's it's the read, pray, serve. Go to each one of these pages, uh, and that's my whole navigation up top. Is really you know is at home. Then there's the the three pages, and there's a, a link for my books, right? Which will also feel like are pretty important because they also dig deeper into some of these topics, right? Uh, but that's the, the whole navigation is that, right? Yeah, I think I even my about page I threw in um, a link uh, down in the footer. You know, um, it's there, right? But uh, um, and you can get to it. We can find it. You know, I link to it in a few other places, stuff as well. But um, but that's it. Right, I structured and built my website around around the core ideas that I decided were my focus, my main focus for the blog. Okay, uh, so that's the first thing, right? To structure for your blog, that's how you use that information, right? Uh, don't give yourself a, a, a header menu of a million different things that's going to confuse your readers. Draw attention to the things that uh, are that are your purpose, uh, that are your focus and your direction. The second thing is the about page. I mentioned my about page, right? Um, and uh, and you can use that focus in that direction around the about page. And one of the things we actually dive into a little bit in the in that uh, 31 days to blog awesomeness e-course uh, that I mentioned uh, up front was uh, was how to build an awesome about page, right? You know, so this talks a little bit about me. Uh, talks a little bit about Bible Dude uh, You know, you see how I even kind of share that whole idea of of what my focus is, the read, pray, serve, right, and uh, and how that works. You know, what to expect. Uh, you know, read, pray, serve. I got those subcategories listed there. Just subscribe, connect with me on social media. And here's my mission, right? Uh, all of this stuff is driven by uh, by. Uh, how I kind of use that that focus in that direction that I've identified uh, through a lot of my my self reflection, uh, you know, reviewing other websites and keyword research and stuff. Right, uh, I use all of that to help me kind of shape and form uh, what my about page says about me because that's what I want to focus on. Right, I want to focus on. Uh, you know, these these are the ideas that are important to me. Um, and as you work through the about page, you see that that's actually uh, pretty clear. So, uh, so use that information to help kind of define what you write about on your about page and how you share that. Okay. The third thing is, and this is a, a pretty cool concept, in, uh, and it's called pillar post, right? And a pillar post is is basically creating a blog post that kind of becomes a core piece. Of um, of content that builds out a stronger series of content, uh, you know, over over time or whatever, uh, and really ultimately the goal is 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 to build the the, the ultimate resource on that topic. Okay, um, you know, and and you can do this for for big main ideas. You can do this for sub ideas that even kind of 
kind of get in and maybe maybe you're uh, find some opportunity on, on a specific keyword. Uh, for me, I actually got I got to preach a sermon a little while back on uh, on lament, on biblical lament, sadness, a perspective on sadness in the Bible, right? Um, you know, so so I've expanded on that uh, that a little bit and. I've been working out a series, and and really what you see here is is this is a blog post, okay? Uh, typical blog post stuff, you know, a couple sections, uh, but here's the big key piece, right? This is one of the big things that makes this uh, a really key resource, uh, particularly for search engines and stuff on the topic, right? Uh, so what I'm doing is that this is a series of blog posts that I ended up writing. The one that we're looking at right now is kind of the the main uh, center hub. For that it's the pillar uh, that's holding the whole structure up okay uh, and basically as I write the additional blog posts in the series um, I'm linking to each one of those so you see I've got a couple of them done and a few more to go uh, and as I you know complete the other ones too those will be lit up and you know active links uh, that will get people to it all right uh, I'm adding images that have to do with lament uh, uh, you know, and the images, you know, if you watch some of our webinars on, on SEO for, for the blogs and stuff too, you get the right alt tags and all that stuff in there as well too. I drop a video on the page. Why would I want to drop a video on the page? And that's the sermon that I actually preached on the topic. Now, why would I drop a video on the page? Because uh, particularly a YouTube video, Google owns YouTube, right? So obviously it's impacting their algorithms a little bit. It's not going to make me boost all the way to number one because I dropped this YouTube video in there. Uh, but it's certainly a thing that helps, right? So ultimately, my goal here is to build a great resource on this topic so that when somebody goes to search engines and they search that term lament, right? Ultimately, eventually, I'm going to want this to show up there on that first page to be that resource that kind of gets them over to my website. Uh, and that's one of the ways that you can use a lot of your kind of keyword research and focus and stuff too, is to create these pillar posts, right? That help you become an authority on a certain topic, a certain keyword structure or phrase. Uh, so, uh, so look at that as a way to uh, uh, build strong content, uh, you know, full of uh, you know, full of its own content, standalone, uh, but links to other content. Uh, whether it's on your website or somewhere else, uh, you know, maybe you wrote an article as a guest post on somebody else's blog, link to that as well too. That's that that stuff works great. Links are really kind of what builds the internet. Uh, and, you know, photos, videos, whatever, right? Yeah, but you're really kind of creating the ultimate resource on those topics. And if you think about it, right? You know, as you even go back to keyword research, um, you know, it's a lot of these terms, right? You know, there may be terms in here too, like. You know, maybe this is not a big thing, but there's some good opportunity here for uh, for somebody to write on this topic of fervent prayer, right? Um, you know, maybe some, somebody write on this topic of draw close to God, you know, uh, whatever it is, you know, you, you might be able to find other keyword terms that you can go after uh, and build great resources around that complement your overall kind of strategy, right? So. So these ideas, who we are in Christ or how to get closer to God, you know, fervent prayer might be an aspect of how to get closer to God. So this might be one of the big focuses for you and what you're about, defining that direction. But these other key words will provide opportunities for you to build, build other great resources that can rank over time. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's that piece right there. Um, so with that, yeah, think about that. Think about how you use this information to structure your blog, uh, to build a great about page that helps people identify and understand who you are, right, and what you want to be about, right, and what you want to be about is obviously it has to do with that, uh, that research and that focus and that direction, uh, and then build other great content that's going to support these, these pillar posts and stuff that uh, will provide great resources and opportunities to rank on search engines. Uh, to get you more new readers out there, right? Social media is great for uh, for reaching people who already connect with you and follow you and stuff. Um, viral is much harder uh, on on there, but uh, but you, know, you build stuff right with the right kind of focus and direction. Uh, build a strong platform to build on, um, you know, and and do these great pillar posts and stuff. Uh, those are things that will help you rank higher and find new readers who are going to Google uh, and other search engines and stuff to. Uh, to find answers to their questions. Okay. 
And with that, it's a, one more quick shout out for the uh, the 31 days to uh, hashtag blog awesomeness. Go to academy.fistbumpmedia.com uh, where we, we dig into this the, this idea of finding focus and direction and, and then really building on that for, for the rest of the 31 days. Uh, you know, after the, the, those first, you know, two, three days that really kind of dig into this idea a little bit. Um, but uh, but great resource. Uh, like I said, $29 at academy.fistbumpmedia.com that uh, uh, 31 days to hashtag blog, awesome, blog awesomeness. That's less than a dollar a day, right? So, um, so anyway, great tool uh, to help you kind of build out and find direction uh, and leverage that for your blog. And with that, I just want to say thanks for uh, for joining this uh, this webinar. Uh, you know how to find the right uh, focus and direction for your blog. And uh, you know if you have any questions or need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're always here, uh, happy to help. Um, grab grab some time for a quick consult, uh, whatever, and chat with us. Uh, and uh, and we look forward to. Uh, helping you learn how to implement some of the stuff even more and find more success and reach more readers online with your blog. Uh, with that, I just want to say thanks. Have a great day. Boom. A big fist bump for you right there. Hmm.